Welcome, welcome, lovely people. Thank you. Uh, glad to have you back watching us again. Um, what are we going to cover in this video? In this video, you will hear the following from me. So let me tell you what I'm going to tell you before I tell you what I'm telling you. Um, we're going to tell you Bitcoin's recovery, why we think it's a recovery, why we think Bitcoin will be going up and how we think it's going to be and why it won't be immediate, absolute, single-minded blow-off upside, why it might be more measured to start working its way up, a bleed, a little bit of up, a little bit of down. We're going to be covering that. So the Bitcoin recovery, number one. Number two is what we're going to tell you. Uh, we're going to get into the topics of Ethereum's relative underperformance recently, despite it being in a reversal head and shoulder, and why it's been uh, damaged by, in our opinion, assigning a reason, we assume, um, by the other platform tokens that have been eating its dinner, DOT, ADA, and more recently by Binance token as well, which you got from us uh, on a great setup uh, not so long ago at around $142. So we're going to cover that. Uh, we're going to look at their relative strengths to each other, which one's currently looking like it's going to jump a little bit more than the others uh, and why it's not necessarily who you think given the recent overperformance of Ada that took it into the next realm. Who enjoyed the run-up in Ada? Uh, I'm hoping some of you did indeed as well. Also, I'm going to look at one or two items of the traditional market. Normally, the Market Sniper channel, the one you should also be subscribed to for the real world, but there's something important I need you to know about what's going on there. Um, and this is all part of 360-degree analysis, keeping your eyes in the back of your head, to the front, to the right, to the forward, to the back, to the down, making sure you're aware of everything that's happening in the larger sphere of world, because those same participants in that market are also people that are participating in the crypto markets. What hurts them there can lead to reactions elsewhere in such a sphere. We are not an isolated bubble by virtue of being in crypto. So we're teaching you to learn about other things and other spaces. If you just come in and you're in your 20s and it's all about the crypto, it's all about the crypto. Expand your knowledge. Allow yourself to learn about other things. You can be a rookie for a while. It's okay. You start at the bottom, you learn more. But in years' time, you start to accumulate very useful things that save you from making bad, bad decisions. At the end of this day... This channel right here, the Crypto Sniper and the Market Sniper. And of course, we have our far-flung lunatic fringe, the Resets uh, Sniper as well for you, uh, are primarily designed to open your mind, broaden you out, and to help you build wealth in reset uh, times and reset season. And boy, do we have reset season coming on. And for that, you have to sometimes look at the traditional markets. And some of you, your eyes glaze over. I'm just a crypto guy. I'm so narrow. I'm just like this. You can have depth and be narrow, but you can also learn uh, about things that are influences on the periphery. So I'm going to actually start with a chart that has nothing to do with crypto, but I have already spoken of um, in the other uh, channels. If you're following us on Twitter, the crypto sniper, the market sniper, the Reset Sniper, only one S between Market and Sniper. Um, make sure you grab the follows there. Don't forget to sub the channels as well. We also appreciate the likes and the shares, by the way. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's our currency. You guys are very generous, uh, and we continue to enjoy that generosity, and we give you great thanks for it. Um, so, without further ado, let's go into that out of the crypto sphere chart that actually has some effect. Because, before I go to that chart, because, 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 Crypto is also part of a category. It's anti-fiat. That's a phrase coined here to explain that not only is gold the anti-dollar, but we're anti all fiats, not just the dollar, but the dollar is the dominant god uh, currency for which all things are traded in, all commodities are priced in. Have you noticed commodity inflation? You would be noticing it if you're watching the Market Sniper channel. Um, we are anti-fiat and not only is gold and silver monetarized metal that is serves a role as anti-fiat, but greatly manipulated in many people's opinion, but Bitcoin is also part of that anti-fiat category. However, Bitcoin is being allowed to run um, and be careful what they're allowed to run because they are showing you which gate as a sheep you should take for the field or the feeding trough. And Bitcoin may well be the gate trough that's the closest to the abattoir. 
Um, so you might want a little bit of the gate that nobody else wants. And people will say, oh, but it's not moving, it's not moving, it's not moving. I listen to some uh, commentators in the crypto space that I really, really like, and they're really down on silver and metals. And what? Silver's at $25 last time. Last high way back in 2011, some 10 years ago, it was 50. You've spent 10 years and you've only got half your money. Um, crypto is the big, big thing. It may be designed that way, to be that way. And yes, people say, but it's the future, bits of the future, you old school. No, you want a little bit of everything. There's a reason, there's a reason. But let's go to that chart, to the dollar index, and let me talk to you about why this is an interesting chart. And why, also, it is bearing of great relevance to cryptos. So, this is one of very few non-crypto charts, but I want you to understand this. So we're looking here, roughly the 12 hours, so that's half a day. Uh, in essence, I can, of course, show you the full day so we can take you up a little bit. Let's go right the way up to the, the daily setup and say, since the great COVID debacle, we had a dip. We had, you got properly whiplash. People that don't know or weren't expecting what was coming in the oil sell-off got proper whiplash over here. I'm grabbing a pen. I'm on my favorite color. First you dipped, then you absolutely pump rocketed. It was brutal there. We were along the, the lira then, but it didn't follow through. It caught us by surprise. It turned, it sold off. Then it went into a holding pattern, a bit thrashy. And that was it. That was your blow off the run and fear into dollar. So during that period, what happened to Bitcoin? Do you remember? Do you remember? How low did she go? She went, she went and she dived and she took a snorkel and a goggle and she may have even put on a tank because she went deep, deep down and she threw it right the way down sub 4K. Some of them got a three number, some of them bounced on the four, um, but you went down to three nines from on many exchanges. That was while pumpity pump for the dollar. Then it paused, then it rested, then it came up. During that period, Bitcoin itself, and we will go to that chart, we will remind you, but first let's look at it from the dollar angle. Everybody thinks the Bitcoin chart is about Bitcoin. No, it's about Bitcoin's relationship to the dollar. <laughs> Actually, the dollar moves too. It just doesn't move as much. But there will be times when it can and it will and it might. Big, big fear. And as you can see with my big uh, pink scribble over there, that was a big surge in mold. From that top on the dollar index, where the dollar started to get killed, Bitcoin got reinflated up from the COVID-19 lows. Remember, this is all March one year ago. We are March today. March is the month. Yes, beware the Ides of March coming on 15. Also, also the third month, three is a magic number. Um, and of course, my birthday, uh, born on a three as well. You can, I'm making space on my desk for all those presents you lot are going to be sending to me. Uh, I can't wait. I've got to have to clear a room, a couple of rooms. Um, thank you very much. I, in anticipation, of course, something small, uh, a little farm maybe would be nice. Um, anyway, uh, enough of that nonsense. It is the month. Uh, so that was March. It's now a year later. And since then, we had a full year D inflation or devaluation, let's say, of the dollar. So up top here, where were we? We were above 103 on the Dixie. Bam, down to there, 89s, uh, we traded sub 90. Now that doesn't sound like a huge drop, 103 uh, down to 89 points, whatever's, whatever's. But actually in currency terms, that represented a massive devaluation and it was brutal. There were very small rallies. They were brutal. There was man peas off the roof a number of times on selectively lower roofs. He was going all the way down. He must have had a couple of pints up top there because he had plenty to lighten up on. All the way down, all the way down, all the way down. To around about here. Now, the big element of technical analysis in this is that we've interviewed the likes of uh, Brent Johnson on the Market Sniper channel, on that other channel where we talked to him about uh, some of his thoughts. He might be early not wrong because he was saying... The end game for fiat is actually a melt-up in the dollar. Of course, we will get the melt-up in Bitcoin and gold on top of a rising dollar. That will be a real moment when your metals, they can't stop the metals from going up and then they'll go disorderly up. Uh, and then they will even out crypto, crypto potentially, but uh, because they've been contained for so long. But the cryptos themselves will also be going uh, greatly on a strong dollar. That is truly, mark my words, when that day is happening, you will have 
The other smaller FX emergings, you'll have currency and debt crises in all sorts of nations. This is real political economic case history happening here. And it's got all to do, not just with the crypto markets, with an entire reset, which is why we have those three circles. We are in that sweet spot, that conjoined point, which captures the greatest economic reset synchronized globally that you will ever, ever have heard of in all of history, including presence. And you are living through it, people. You are living through extremity, money, power, uh, entire world way back from the very beginning was all about power and dominance. And this is the economic end game that takes us into global world totalitarianism in my worldview uh, in a surveillance state. But less of that, we can talk reset later. Um, so you've got to build your wealth out of this. This is a unique opportunity. Link below, by the way, being shared right now. You can book a call, chat to real traders and max out your wealth in these times of great reset. So what's happening now with this dollar index? Well, it's kind of dropped down to this low. And we talk about technically a couple of things. We talk about a three impulse falling uh, wedge. So you'll learn a little bit about this on a, a program. In fact, quite a bit. There is your first quite complex little move. Then we take another color. Let's go back to our fave. You kind of got a second. And we then talk about a third impulse. No one talks about the impulses in wedges. You will learn all of this. This is unique, derived, practical, technical analysis trading, hunt volatility funnel method on all aspects, things that involve constrictions. Note the falling wedge is in fact a constricting event. What is actually happening is you're getting tactical, tactical retreats, just absorbing these excessive sell-offs as all the people getting out of the dollar, the big short, everybody is now standing on the one side of the ship uh, and short the dollar. Everybody, oh, it's just proliferation, proliferation, just short, just short. Easy trade, sounds simple. Eventually there comes a point in a time where it doesn't actually keep going down. And what happens is you end up with an awful amount of short covering that has to happen. Shorting now is future buying. Those trades have to be closed. And if interest rates go up and they're going up on the dollar, right now and on dollar debt, on the bond market, on everything else. These core structural elements I'm busy telling you about are what are going to tell you information about the crypto market that none of the other crypto tubers, I'm afraid, have the nous or the know-how to introduce to you. And that's not something I'm not trying to build, brass myself up. You need to understand what's going on elsewhere. There are some great guys fundamentally, but you need to have technical analysis to see how it's happening. Follow the money. The chart is the footprint in the sand, guys. And the traditional markets will drive it because it's the same participants in both markets. Okay, so what typically happens after that third impulse? Well, you can break out of the wedge. And I've shown you uh, on the market sniper a number of instances with oil breaking out, with Robusta Coffee. I've shared trades uh, with you. Of course, my premium community are in them before you. We've been discussing them earlier, but we let you know once uh, we've all settled in and we've done what we do. You could be earlier if you want to be part of that too yourself. Of course, the sooner you get in, the tighter you stop, the more expansive, but be given plenty of opportunities if there's good material in there for you to make some money. But we are non-advisory. Please remember that. That's uh, for consider it entertainment and uh, information sense, not advisory. So with this likely potential of a breakout here in the dollar, what does that mean? It's going to cause pressure on the emerging currencies. What does that mean for crypto? Well, your South Africans, your Turks, uh, your Brazilians, your Indians, if that pressure starts to come, they will be getting out into gold, silver and crypto, which will mean Bitcoin, Ethereum and all the others. And of course, being still by market cap, a much smaller market, um, 10, 10 to 15 trillion, I think gold market is last time I heard, um, varies obviously with the price, somewhere in the mid range there. Uh, crypto for now, still significantly smaller, but growing quicker. So that will drive from the foreign nations. You've seen Zimbabwe, you've seen Venezuela getting involved in crypto because of the cost of Bitcoin. A lot of them are getting into Litecoin, if you can remember, because the perception being cheaper, um, etc. So we've seen these cycles happen before. That's where some future support will come. You've got the likes of ADA that are putting a lot of attention on their African um, interests because they think 
those nations will be very, very important. High in number, lots of utility, small amounts being pushed with backwards and forward. So inside of this falling wedge, we'll do a, a drop down in here. And just show you and then we'll get to the crypto charts because at the end of the day it's a crypto channel but i want you to understand some things you'll have seen that we called for a falling wedge within the upper story of our big falling wedge so just to remind you here's our big fella and the bottom part is this is the halfway mark that's the splitter of our big fella and the bottom is actually down 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 somewhere there down um, not in line of view because I've dropped from the daily to the two hourly so you are actually on the top floor there's our splitter and inside of that you've got a falling wedge on the Dixie and you bounced off the halfway mark often that'll do with only people that splits wedges um, that's where you'll learn how why and what else you can see and get advantages wise out of a wedge splitter um, as I say link below book out find grow yourself grow your ability and be in a community that will be maximizing this so that was a break of the smaller wedge in there which had its own splitter um, and that was an early warning and now what's happened is we've actually put our first foot outside the big macro wedge that is a falling wedge of one full year I remember that melt up in the dollar and that's why it suddenly stopped on a dime and dropped back down then held for a while and then absolutely spilled and since then it's been largely down that was a year ago that event started. COVID-19 was a bookmarking event. It was the final capitulation on oil that we called. Yes, in other traditional markets, this is the value of doing real charting. Whether you know it or not, on the Market Sniper channel, we're the only person that ever called for single-digit oil when oil was $67. It was a ludicrous thing to say. Oil hadn't traded below $10 in about 35 years. But you heard it here first. That's insight. That's insight can only come from method and charting. So what's happening is if dollar starts to get relatively stronger, let's say it's not ripping. They can't afford to allow it to rip. Remember, it's about timing when they pull the tent down. And they might not be ready to pull the whole tent down. Lots of things still to happen. We're going into summer in the northern hemisphere. Um, the whole pandemic, whatever notion is going to hopefully be cycled back for a short while, but not as much as you hope, think, new normal, all that nonsense. But I don't think they're ready to pull the tent just down just, just yet, but they're probably far more ready than we realize because this is a long, long, long-term game that they've been working on for a real while and the pandemic is a major escalation. So inside of that, if dollar starts to work its way up, what's going to happen? pressure on lira rand real indian rupee uh, a lot of third world um, countries emerging market countries emerging markets have been very very strong commodities have been very strong so they need to rein back because that is your inflation dollar dying suddenly all commodities going up because they priced in dollars but they're also going up because other nations have proliferated too but not to the quite the same degree so we're seeing this inflationary cycle that will drive the anti-fiat, gold, silver, and Bitcoin. But if they start letting the dollar leak a little bit up, but not too fast, why wouldn't they want it to go too fast? Because immediately it creates a debt crisis in the emerging market nations. They've added more debt over COVID. They're absolutely bankrupt and they need to make interest payments and they have to make them in dollars, the currency in which they borrowed in. So therefore, they are uh, just small movements now in the dollar will lead to far more sensitivity to ability to pay back. So the dollar bleeds up slowly. It's going to retain, it's going to build pressure slowly on the emerging markets. But then at least it keeps a little bit of a lid on the coffee markets, the runaway markets in all of those areas. This could slow the gains in crypto a degree slow them it's not going to stop them i still think the coffee price is going up the oil price i've told you is going in my view beyond three digits all of these things are going to happen so the anti-fiats will still benefit and the main benefit they suppress the gold and silver and they try push the most into the crypto so first the cryptos go and they go generally more but in the beginning of Bitcoin, now let's leave and go back to traditional uh, crypto markets and leave the traditional um, conventional markets. What 
what we had in the original beginning of the great Bitcoin, first cup gold nugget move, beautiful people. So you wanna, I want you to understand the dynamics of this. I don't just want to sit here and, and feed you fish. I want you to grow and understand what's going on in the world a little bit better. Comprehension is means you boot yourself up a couple of IQ points, you're able to hold a conversation a bit better, and you have a greater understanding. We're not here just to uh, throw free bread to hungry beggars. Um, we're bringing you along. We want you not to be a hungry beggar. We want you to be a fisherman too, not just someone relying on uh, fish. You're not seals slapping your flippers together uh, and bouncing a ball on your nose just to get a fish. So let's talk about uh, the dollar index next to Bitcoin price. I want to show you how that first part and this ties in absolutely with HVF method and HVF theory. The first part of the break move was one of your best. Why? Because we had a dollar weakness tailwind. A dollar weakness tailwind. Damn, sorry about that. Let's get that Bitcoin chart back. Let's get dollar index there. Let's get Bitcoin. Come on, you. Now, if you have a tailwind of a weakening dollar and it's the core fiat, it's the crown fiat, what you end up getting is you get a, a very useful set of circumstances where both the Bitcoin wants to go up and the thing it's being measured against wants to go down. So I'm going to try and marry these up a little bit underneath each other. So we get March under March. There we go. Uh, there's the one. And let's see this March under the previous March. Let's pull it a little bit forward, pull it a little bit forward. There we go. There's your COVID lows. And I'll just take all the lines off so that we have a clear line of sight on both of them. They're not perfectly under each other. Forgive my uh, marrying it up. Let's get it a little bit better. So what am I showing you here? I'm showing you the inverse correlation. The inverse correlation of the God fiat market, the dollar, to the anti-fiat that's allowed to run Bitcoin against the dollar. Remember, it's not just a Bitcoin chart. It's Bitcoin dollar. So let's have a look at that. Let's have a look at that. You can see we roughly March of this year. Uh, that's where we are. That's where we are. And that was your March of the beginning. And then mid-March was the big day of vomit. Uh, and we all fell over. Ring a ring a rosies. We all caught flu and we all die of flu. Um, there you go. So that was your dollar pump. That was your Bitcoin dump. Can you see it? The inverse correlation here. Then we clawed our way back and then we sat over here. Dollar index down and sat over there. Then the dollar index started to roll over in June and Bitcoin started to ease out. The first part of the dollar weakness came down there. Bitcoin just held its own ground and went super low volatility. So it actually had a tailwind, but it was biding its time. It was still holding. It was like a sprinter in the blocks, getting more and more taut, putting its ass in the air, stretching those hamstrings, ready to blow out of the blocks, uh, Usain Bolt style. And then we started to roll over and pee off the roof. We popped, we ran, we came a little bit back. A lot of butthurt people in the COVID uh, spill. Many people were flushed out, so it was a slower start. It was a slower start. Got back here, dollar firmed up, we revisited. This was our first cup gold nugget break, by the way. And we told you about it. We said, we're not sure if it will be a first cup gold nugget. Normally, you'd be very lucky if it is, but the dollar weakness kept pushing it into the break. So actually, Bitcoin was made to break, possibly before even it was ready. It was showing a little bit of weakness on that level of dollar diminishment. But once it got started, it said, okay, damn, this dollar is just going to keep pushing us out the door. We may as well run. Uh, and that's what it did. And there it started running. And since then, all the way down on the dollar and then the process, similar October, October to 2021. Wow, great just run up. Great run up there. Great sell off. Now, more recently, 
what's actually happened is institutions have now been catching up with the Bitcoin narrative since October uh, through to the end of the year. Now we're getting more institutional buying. The dollar didn't go a great deal more down from that low. In fact, that was your final low over here in January sometime of 2021. January 21, you're roughly there. We had our first rest on Bitcoin. Since then, actually, the dollar is sideways and slightly up, a little bit up, a little bit down. And what's actually happening is we're getting more normal trending and pullback markets from here. Can you see that this period, October, was the big easy? And what happened there? Your HVF was in its in-play zone. It's the easiest time to trade. It's called breakout trading. You get your highest and easiest journey. First interim run, second interim run, target run, not much in terms of pushback. That was the big easy, guys. That was when you needed to be leveraged long. You needed to just run and you made uh, first targets uh, all the way through and you had a little bit of overperformance run. Now we've had flat to mildly up um, markets and we've had noticeably institutional money coming in so we got pushed up but now a second pullback that is pretty high we've gone from what was it 58 and i think we traded 44's uh, lows maybe even 43's that's quite a substantial pullback from uh, 58 down to 43 it's 15 it's 15 on 58 you're talking beyond 20 percent for a second time in a much earlier period from there to there, there was your high, you pull back there, and then you had another little run, and you're already facing your second 20 plus pullback percent in there. And that is because you've no longer got the obvious tailwind. So now what am I saying to you? Well, for now, I'm now saying, regarding the dollar index, that you're going to get a bit of a bleed up on the dollar index. Not too hard, not too fast, but I don't think it's going to keep going down and being that tailwind anymore. In fact, you've already seen this year, it hasn't been much of a tailwind. Does everyone understand why uh, I'm saying what I'm saying? Let's have a look at your comments. I will always read your comments. Let's have a catch up opening statement. That was me giving you the first heads up, understanding the relationship with the dollar, understanding why with the dollar, understanding rates are going up. That means more people will get a better interest rate. Bitcoin doesn't officially pay you any interest rate. That means now the relative attractiveness of a dollar has gone up because you're going to get a better rate. You won't get that rate. Man in the street doesn't get that rate. Of course you won't. You know that. I know that. But in the system, in the system between the interoperability of the larger banking cartel, the primary dealers, the Fed, etc., and on bonds, if you were a buyer of government, you, your value's gone down, but the rate that you're being paid is now gone a little higher. So that takes some of the delight and some of the tailwind away from Bitcoin. Hit the likes for Sniper, you ungrateful plebs, says Gab. Uh, I'm not sure I'd characterize you as that. But thank you very much. 186 likes, which is almost a third. We appreciate that. It's a no advert channel. Um, and we like it that way. We don't rely on revenue from YouTube at all. Um, so good stuff. Uh, I think that Dixie will keep going down, says PS. He could be right. So let me just say, I am making a statement that you won't continually keep getting on balance of probabilities, reliability of weakness on the dollar. And some people think the dollar just keeps getting weaker, 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 falls through the floor uh, and that it could continue. And not every falling wedge has to just break automatically up. So how do I be wrong? And maybe Mr. PS be right is you have a breakout and then you come over. And let me just say, I never trust and feel confident just being a massive dollar bull. I'm just saying you're not getting the tailwind of the weakness that gave you the open play HVF to target very easy run, very low pullbacks, major upside that you just literally you could have put at the 10,700, 2.5x long and kept your Bitcoin and left it and closed it at our targets with a little bit of overperformance and not traded in that. And you could have had a small amount of leverage on it, not too great aggressive. You could have done 50%. Uh, so if you had 10 Bitcoin, you could say, let's play this as if I've got 15 and put on five or 20. And you would have gone up, up, up. Your Bitcoin would have gone up from 10K to the better part of 42K before it had its first pullback. Let's say you got out round about 40 your leverage. You could have been 20K long 
you would have gone up from 10k would have gone up four times um, that Bitcoin you would have made turned that uh, 20 Bitcoin into a substantial amount of Bitcoin you could have closed it reduced your leverage and just be investment now um, and that simple decision to do that could have seen you make an immense amount of money. You do that on one Bitcoin, you could have made an immense amount of money. You did it on half, um, you would have made an immense amount of money. So that's point number one regarding the recovery of Bitcoin. Now let's go into the smaller time frame. I'm going to let the dollar index go for you now, because I know it's crypto and all you guys hate that talk about dollar, uh, but you've got to learn and you've got to grow and you've got to see these other things playing a role. So what's happening right now in a shorter term after this another pullback event that has occurred. So I'll just show you how we see it. And um, we were discussing it Sunday night. I was saying to the guys, this is going to recover on balance of probabilities. And we were kind of hoping that it would do a bigger dip here and, and break lower down. It just held and it went. Of course, it did a little resistance at our funnel, little flag, which is exactly what was expected. And I said, well, the next move is going to be to clear the, the funnel range. And it's continued to work its way up. There's a big level there at the 50K. You guys know about that. What is the structure now for Bitcoin's recovery? So this is part one of this live stream. Why Bitcoin's going to recover? Why it won't just be plain sailing like it was from the 10K to the 42, 44K, but that it will have more pullbacks, slightly slower. You've got to be a bit more cautious. It could be a slightly longer um, um, Counter, trend, uh, counter trends uh, working against you, all of these aspects. And that's because you've not got the tailwind anymore. And in fact, that tailwind could come around and be headwind. It doesn't have to. We could bounce along. Um, it could even roll over and I could be wrong if it starts selling off again and makes new lows. It came down really hard. It's surprising it'll stop just before that technical resistance of the last low out there on the dollar index. Remember that? Oh, I enjoyed that. A little bit of a stretch. I hope I don't pull a poop string or anything. Um, but anyway, so that was the last low of the dollar index. Um, and it's kind of getting a little bit of a reaction. Sometimes before you run a low, you get a little bit of a reaction. It can pop out the wedge, go up for a while, make another rising wedge, get really tired and just smack down with momentum through that low. I don't rule that possibility out. I would say it's a number two possibility, very high. But clawing its way back a bit could also be something you have to bear more in mind. If that were to happen, great news for Bitcoin. And of course, great news for silver, particularly, and also a bit for gold as well. So all those things, the anti-fiats will get back. By the way, so anti-fiats are all your friends. You don't have to be a hater of gold or silver just because of crypto and say, oh, it's old, it's boomer stuff. Let me tell you, tangible, physical is analog. Uh, Bitcoin is digital. Having a little bit of both will cover you for all eventualities. All right. This is not uh, tribalism. There's no time for tribalism in this. So this clawback is coming. Now, how does this recovery continue? Um, let's talk about that. How does this recovery continue? Let's go up a time frame for you. So I was explaining in a voicemail uh, and an update to my premium community what I think comes next. So 50K, obvious key level of significance round number. So what will happen? Let's get a nice fat pin. It's been quite, look at this here, and you can see this recovery from this third impulse. Actually, on the two hour chart, the two hour chart, you do not have one serious red candle. You have one spinning top with a slight red annotation. You have one green, two greens, three, four, five, one red, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven greens to one red candle. Pretty decent to stay in that. That's been, it's been making me money throughout today. But in a, you know, it's not a streaking market. It's just a runaway uh, quote. We didn't get in on the first green candle. We do not jump in. In fact, it's more representative to highlight from about the third and fourth uh, candle, but nonetheless, it's a nice bit of uh, Tom to make. And if you were investment defensive, you should have been 100% investment long. That's what we did. We got back 100% defensive long. We were making new lows. We had inverted structure, so we we're waiting. Three marginally lower lows. Boom. Off in a bottom. So what's the next uh, technical structure that happens that comes out of this? 
Well, the super fat, let's go with the super fat Koki. Whoops, let's do it with jaw, shall we? Being your 50k, you actually have what I often call the double shoulder, final low. I don't know if you're going to get a double shoulder uh, again. I think this will continue to work its way up to the key 50k level. It will probably put a toe or two over the 50k level and then possibly have some form of rest. Why you got resisted there and you got resisted uh, there. Of course, that was also our splitter on our uh, macro overperformance bands. You can learn about that and what that means um, on one of our programs and how we'll trade it. So what you do, maybe a little bit of that. And then a dip back. You could even come back as far as this fat uh, funnel, these red and green lines here. And you could make that right shoulder which, for which we would highlight it like that. And you might have a second go like that uh, before coming up and making progress here to the upside. So that would be left, uh, sort of double left shoulder, double right shoulder, or maybe single right shoulder. And your head low is here out of that wedge, which kind of was around the 43,000 mark. So that is a potential recovery for Bitcoin. Bitcoin recovery. Let's see. FB sweating. Others coming for their lunch. Uh, look monthly candle rejecting. It's always good to have a look. So that was a good comment by Gojira. We often do that and I haven't covered it yet. So I'll cover it now because he's prompted me. Uh, and it's a good reminder always to have is we go and we look at the big time frame charts. This whole affair could be over inside of the month. So you can see here, and let's get a semi-sensible size pen, you can see here there was some selling. We got a, our first major wick a little bit here on the last monthly. And we got another selling wick after pressing higher here. We haven't in this breakout. The breakout occurred there. That was your triggering event candle. You had a little revisit to your funnel and then off, off, off you went. It's the first two candles in a row that you've had some high level of wick rejection. So that is the shows the stirring of the dollar being a bit of a headwind. It shows the stirring of the dollar being a little bit of a headwind. And we call tops on these charts before. Shoot, uh, shooting star, shooting star, following a 50% WEC reje re rejection when we were still in the consolidation phase. You are not now in the consolidation phase. They are different contexts. They're not the same context. However, you have had on the monthly level, one, two, three, four, five, six, if you count this month, non-stop months up and if you go on from the triggering event you have eight months up with just a single down month on the revisit there so it's been a pretty good spell for crypto if you've been net long you should have made money but many of you will have reduced your bitcoin valuation don't be doing that don't ever be doing things that are reducing it we can't help it sometimes when we are trading. We don't get everything right. But the overall gain is to gain Bitcoin valuation. If you're regularly shedding Bitcoin valuation, you need to click the link below and start adding Bitcoin valuation, which will certainly ramp your fiat valuation in this world. But Bitcoin valuation is what counts at the moment. So, yeah, that was an interesting chart and worthwhile. We always look at it. We can also look at the weekly and the biweekly within that. So, you know, you're not early bull doors anymore. If you look at the bi-weekly, this is the first standalone candle that is very, very clearly a pause candle. Let's go with the box. That could be a shooting star, albeit that we are trading up now. You can't rule out that actually this month's candle could still turn red. The current candle we are in is a live candle. It is only a day old, <laughs> I think. I think it's only a day old. Must be the March. No, hold on. Sorry, it's two weeks. It's a fortnightly candle. So it might have started Sunday that we can actually check how much data, how many days data. So don't over assume the one that started 1st of March. That one was 15 Feb. So really it just captured one day. So the current candle is not relevant. That can all be a wick 
and we can have another period of down. And that could be the dollar index up, back up, heading to the upside. The fiat's fighting back. The control structure, the central banking cartel, need to take some of the froth out of the anti-fiats, particularly the digital anti-fiat, which has had all the best juice sent its way. They've got the other two for now under control. What you then get is too much money going into the cryptos. It's expanding, but they need that to expand because that's the new horse we've all got to jump onto uh, with the central bank uh, digital currencies. Um, RSI divergence is of no interest. RSI divergence. So I will not be talking about RSI divergence. It is a lagging mathematical indicator. It's the same as moving averages. It's like having something slowed up, simplified, that lags that you've tied to the back of your car, a dead cow corpse. The price is not going to change direction or do anything because of what you're dragging behind it. The engine is what drives everything, the car and the corpse. Um, so having this lagging with a tow rope called mathematics tied to it is not going to give you anything insightful. You can bounce in the top oversold of RSI for an entire bull market and go higher and higher and never get to the oversold part. And divergence just means the rate at which you are changing is no longer represents the same degree of acceleration as once before. That doesn't mean you're going to stop. Just because I stop accelerating, I'm doing a 300 k's per hour in my Porsche Turbo and the Autobahn, doesn't mean I'm therefore going to stop and turn around. Okay, so basically that kind of technical analysis, um, my eyes glaze over when people want to talk to me about RSI evaluations. I say, good luck. I spent 10 years learning why that was such a waste of time. Um, and everybody will see instances where it supports their case and not where it doesn't. Francis, what's your view on Riot blockchain? No view at all. Uh, Riot NASDAQ. It's directly correlated to uh, Bitcoin. Don't know it? I'll have to have a look into it, Josh. Rumbling of a Tobin tax could put a spanner in the works. Tobin tax gets reeled out. It's this communistic uh, financial taxation. Anything that financial happens, you, you get taxed for doing any business, basically. It's a punishment of people that do anything with money. So you get punished for investing, you get punished for doing anything. It's a terrible tax. It puts a friction on doing business. But the socialists love it. And this is communist season. So it wouldn't surprise me. Um, it gets reeled out, but uh, generally people don't take it. To yes, there's excuses at the market spreads. There, yes, their excuse is at the market spreads, uh, COVID's going to remove them, no place to get cash. ATM spreads. I, I'm not sure what that comment actually means. Whether you mean at the market spreads, COVID going to remove them, no place to get cash. So, yep, have cash. It's a good idea. Uh, notes, although they will devalue, but if the grid goes down, the ATM network goes down, have emergency money. It's not, gonna, it's not money that's going to go up in value for you. Um, but it, it will secure your ability to secure things in a good down environment from a prepper perspective. Thoughts on Silver Squeeze? That's a macro market, uh, traditional market con uh, content. So I'll handle that and have already spoken a lot on it on the market sniper. Um, so I think that's going to be a bad trade until suddenly it's a very, very right trade. Um, unrealized capital gains tax coming in Canada. Yeah, absolute communism that. An unrealized capital gains tax. They're going to tax you on profits you didn't make. And then what happens if that asset then devalues? All you'll get is a tax credit. Um, and you'll have to claim it. So you'll have to be totally organized. The notion of taking money from people who have yet to earn it um, is unbelievable to me. Canada doesn't fail to disappoint me. Trudeau is such a man-girl shill for the world order. Uh, I can't even begin to hide my disgust at what a little man-child he is. Um, and he's part of the family, his mother and all of that. Go study the history. Anyway, that's reset content. Francis, any plans of inviting Keith? We've asked him. We sent him an email. You need to invite him. Tell him the sniper wants to talk to him. Um, we'd like to speak to him. We're fans of his company. We're ready to give it publicity. 
he must make himself available to speak to us. We'd love to talk to him. Uh, when I say he must, he doesn't have to do anything. We would love to have him. That's all we're saying. The, it's an open invitation. A short squeeze is not a Bitcoin uh, recovery. So we're going to get into the other part of this YouTube. So what next? So we've talked about the Bitcoin recovery. We've said it will work its way up. But don't expect it to be so single-minded. Don't expect not to have to carry through um, some pullbacks. And the possibility exists. We are warning you. The possibility. So this is not leverage season. The possibility exists that if the dollar continues a recovery, Bitcoin faces a headwind and could have a pullback. That's a shooting star on your fortnightly candle. Now, shooting star is not confirmation. You actually have to run a traditional candlestick analysis tactical trade. You should run the low there um, before it's considered a triggered pattern. Uh, and even still, you could run it on a wick and then things get shaken. The dollar is very patchy. So even if it does have a spell of strength, it often fizzles. Um, so you could go down and then it just breaks up and then next thing you know it's weak and Bitcoin's going back up again. So given the choice, I'd rather bull bias Bitcoin strong than dollar bias uh, strong um, because of reliability and the end game. The end game is fiat failure whilst um, digital currency success. So you've got to bear that in mind. Um, well, you can tax potential profit if you write ridiculous laws, and that's what some of them are doing. So we will get a Breton's Mark II, Bilbo Baggins. Um, indeed, it's, you can name it like that, although it won't be Breton Woods in scale. Everybody uses association, like the previous time. Nothing is like the previous time. This is completely freaking globalized and on a scale second to none. That's why it's different. And... It's a tech, and it comes with a tech surveillance, it comes with global communism, it comes with totalitarianism, it comes with a lot of other things that I consider very, very despicable, but, you know, um, it's, that's why it's not the Bretton Woods. But people will use association to other known historical events. So, I know what you mean, it will be similar, just scaled up, and will be New World Order-esque. What about currently spending my unrealized profits in my head? The tax man can sod off. Yeah, I think so. That's the right uh, outlook. Um, but, you know, remember, you've got to comply. Don't do anything legal, etc. Be smart. Um, so let's get on, get on to part two. Ethereum. What's happened to Ethereum? Ethereum is supposed to be in an inverted left shoulder, big ass head, right shoulder, reversal, that 2.5 uh, level was a key level. We had an upside HVF that ran all the way to four, head and shoulders down. Let's get that chart. Let's talk about it. What's happened uh, to Ethereum? Well, gas prices, for one, many of you know about this. In fact, uh, you're as smart as me, if not smarter on this. Uh, gas prices are super high. Um, Ethereum is getting a challenge. Ethereum is getting a challenge and he's getting a challenge from others. So we did a little play on words about gaslighting, but in actual fact, the cost of lighting your gas um, is a little bit too high and a little bit too expensive. So that's the macro draw, technically. The neckline, as we've said before, runs like this. Through there, we probably run it through the four, a little bit higher. That's your neckline, so your left shoulder, right shoulder. We covered this many times, but some of you might be first time on the channel. Share with your friends, by the way. We love to have some of your new friends. We appreciate the shares. So that was supposed to be the big-ass break, and it got off so well. It was such a high-momentum break. We're on the monthly, we're on the fortnightly, sorry, two weeks. We're on the fortnightly chart, and there's a 6.6, as I've mentioned before. This is a log scale, by the way. Um, so the 6.6 is over there. But it is actually as far down as that is, uh, that distance, although it doesn't look like it because it's percentage scale now. So that's supposed to be where it's going. And actually, it's underperformed. And it's fallen back under this waterline in and around the 4% mark, which is roughly there. The 4% is our mark uh, to Bitcoin. So Bitcoin has actually done better than it should have done Versus Ethereum, Ethereum is supposed to be playing catch up because it's the platform. Platforms are going to become massive. Many people 
believe that it'll become bigger than the store value. In other words, it's kind of like the operating system for all digital currencies. Who's going to win that game? Maybe not just one, maybe many. I'm pretty sure we'll have a few options. I don't think there'll be singularity. Everyone thinks there's one winner. Everyone has this mono eyebrow approach. There can only be one winner. Um, no, it's not like that. Uh, you get Virgin Cola, Pepsi Cola, and Coca-Cola, although you shouldn't drink theirs. They hate on the white folks. White man bad is Coca-Cola. So you, you order Pepsi and Bacardi from now on. Okay, they're trying to deny it, but they did it. They were bust. Um, so get rid of these punks, these corporate shills. So, who's eating the dinner of Ethereum? Why has this happened? Why is it pulled back so hard? Gas prices, and who's solving that problem? Well, we'll start with Ada. So Ada, as you know, has been a huge overperformer recently. That's the other chart um, on Binance on a two-weekly basis. That would have brought you a whole bunch of joy. In fact, round about the lows here, March, I think you could have had Ada for fractions of cents. It was looking pretty bleak. Uh, it wasn't high deemed high value then, but a lot of good things were coming. And then it started the alt run. It was actually the first in the big alt runs, and we noted that. And there's the low. You could have had Ada for 1.765 cents, so for less than one and three quarters of a cent. So sub two cents, you could have had Ada trading today for a dollar thirty. Two cents to a dollar thirty. Sixty-five x, if I'm not mistaken. Have I done that right? I think so. Um, th that would take you through to 130 odd. So very, very big move. And that would have been from March, the lows of the pandemic, um, right the way through. And it began here, pretty good. Now it's a bit of a distorting chart because I haven't log scaled it, just to give you a feel. But there was the COVID uh, lows that saw you at 17 cents and actually it ran far better. So let's have a look at other S. Now, there was an interesting thing, and I was running through this chart with uh, a friend physically who's um, nearby me here and uh, is in touch and quite a big Ada fan. And I was highlighting this. So your listing of Ada, lots of pump and hype and hopium, as with any new ICO. So we ignore all that. And we settle down. And in the time that we settled down, there was roundabout. Let's go from March is a good time because we're essentially March today. 2018 March, you were at this extremity finding your level and then you've been trading in this range. And we said others a buy along the lows and it, until recently it was a sell along its relative highs. So I'm going to just right size this chart because for some of you, because of that big sketchiness in the beginning, um, it's scaled, it's rescaled the chart in a manner that's not particularly helpful. Let's give it a bit more time as well. Let's go weekly view. And you can see how this range trade of Ada having to prove itself against Ethereum, we said it started to be taken seriously. Because every time you got here, let's go big cokey again. Every time you got here, which was around about the 5.5 to an Ethereum, it would sell off. This is the value of technical analysis, by the way. Every time it got to the low end, it actually became an accumulate and a buy. Could even do a green. That was a great purchase point. That was a purchase point. That was a purchase point. We got upside HVFs. That was a major triggering event there. And not only did it get to here, a little bit of sell-off, it just absolutely ripped it. And I think that growth, that's taken it to the 35, 40 billion market cap, is 20 billion that Ethereum thought it would get, that it didn't get. 
It's probably the same with DOT, 20 billion it was supposed to get, it didn't get. And it's possibly the same again with Binance token, it was supposed to get and it didn't get. So Ethereum wants to be the platform token, but it's got uh, serious problems and there's new games in town. And that's why it's valuable to have them as five by fives in your portfolio. So I hold these as blue tokens, DOT, um, ADA, and I haven't, I've added Binance coin uh, to it during our previous call for the reasons, but it wasn't always. We also had two DeFi coins in Aave and Wave. Let's have a look at some of your comments before I go further. But as you can see, this is overperformance now from ADA. Does that mean you're rushing and buying now at max hype after a huge expansive blow off move? No. What it does probably mean is it might simmer down and find a base outside of this range. When it goes low vol again, low vol again, you see these very small spinning tops um, somewhere here, maybe 7.5 after coming off a little bit, it might be worthy to accumulate. In other words, people are prepared to stretch what they are expecting this coin to deliver now. We have broken a key range, broken a key range. That was a sniper sights for accumulating other. And we have had. I've had a nice bunch of ADA and it's served me very well. And it's particularly held portfolio value during this period that it was down. So when Bitcoin was selling off. So what do you guys think about ADA? Is there anything to it? Many people say, well, there's nothing being released yet. Um, it's a whole bunch of hype about nothing to be released. Well, I think their plan is they laid a long period of foundation to circumvent with the eventual challenges that they know Ethereum faces a long plan of foundation so that when they get there, they have automatically planned around it. Plus, they've got on-ramps, cross-chain on-ramps, so that people that are in Ethereum can come across to them and vice versa. So thereby, they're being the Linux, or so you might want to think, a phraseology, another association, not exactly right, but to help transfer a kind of idea where actually people of many languages, you don't just need to know Ethereum's languages, you can code in many different languages and they can all operate um, on there. So they want to be the Rosetta Stone of platforms. Elevation Digital, can I get a, yeah, okay. Uh, I am 99% in other, says Leftfast. Hard fork other today, yep. Uh, someone else thinks it's vaporware. Well, there's a lot of money chasing the vaporware. They could all be wrong and you could be right, but generally big money knows better. Allowing multiple assets on ADA. Yes, true. BTC bear trap emerging. Possible. Possible. That shooting star, as I said. So regarding the BTC recovery, it's tenuous. It's not a leverage long. It's tenuous. We've got to watch that dollar, the dollar index. The king fiat starts reasserting. Everyone's afraid. People don't know what to do. They cuddle into the dollar, pushes dollar up, puts pressure on Bitcoin. But more and more people will also use Bitcoin now as a bolt hole for during fear periods. Just somebody that actually uses blockchain, says somebody. I can't use other because there's nothing there. Um, okay, good. March is big for other. Maybe after March it will settle down. Yep, so it's had a good run. So what about the other guys? What about the other guys? Well, let's have a look at them. Dot. So Dot um, has also done exceedingly well. We had an amazing upside HVF in it. Let's just go uh, three day, two days. You can see our uh, analysis on Dot. Right now, for me, Dot is more likely to have a period of overperformance than other, which is super bloated after a major move. So a little bit of catch up from Dot, in my opinion, between the two technically. Um, but this is Dot's short history. It didn't have a large part of the bear market. It came in, um, it was September. This is on Binance that it came in. I don't know if it existed before and Binance wasn't first to list it or whether that is the beginning because it doesn't look like a typical beginning. It might have been about a while uh, first. This might be its Binance beginning. Let's just see what this other chart is, whether I get anything earlier. No, it's all round about the same. Um, so we'll stay with the Binance one. But uh, what you can clearly see is we got an amazing long winding up gestation period here, which was a squeeze. Now you might not be able to see that because it's in log scale. It's gone up so much. We need to log scale it for you. So this is how 
allocating yourself to the right places at the key right time. Note the target made, pull back, push, another one. Off you go, target made, over performance. And hammer there, a little bit of a hammer there and a hammer there. Showing good relative strength. I like this of all the coins right now. Dot, I think I like. It's not a, it's not a specific setup. It could be argued that there's a little bit of a fractalized HVF after a big blow off. But I think it's got probably the, the best strength relatively now for whatever we're going to get now. Which could be mild recovery. Remember that dollar little bit of bit more tail less tailwind now and possibly occasional spits bouts of headwind um, but this was great inflection points where you should be getting in there and there massive and then we've got wicks here so on these bigger time frames that's a supportive candle it's very early that's going to be two days how many days of it i think it's maybe only just today when did it start we are, of course, so that's 28th of February and 1st. So actually it's two days. That's not bad. So I like I like it more than I like BNB. I like it more than I like ADA for now, as in for the next few days out in front of you. Okay, so that's where we're starting. Live trading day. Live trading day. Hour and a half. Crypto analysis. This Friday, March. Non-farm payrolls. Traditional markets. Hour and a half. Half hour break. Full hour and a half with me analyzing crypto friday finds what's the big moves get set for that weekend and into the next week we'll redo a really detailed uh take on all the most interesting coins we'll run down the rack a little bit to see if there's any speculative ones as well that could be interesting so link in the notes right now sub 200 dollars to come and join us for three hours get a bit of a feel of what it's like to um, participate and in our go-to meeting structure, questions can be asked, of course, uh, and responded to. Um, good, good, good. So, Pavel, Link BTC. I'm not going to be doing uh, Link per se today, uh, Pavel. Maybe I'll, if there's a few minutes left at the end, I'll do a quick run pass. So, we want to do .f. This is what's been happening in, against Ethereum on the dot .case, the dot .files. So, again, listing hype craziness. Okay, write it off. We don't know what, it's just a bunch of ICO hype. Let's get that just out of frame and let's right size it and uh, get a bit of a feel. So what we had initially, the dominance of F dribbling down, but then starting to get some challenge and then a marginally lower low and then new high and then not much of a low. Rounded bottom, low vol, and walking its way out. Right now, this is signaling since the beginning of the year, or just by the end of the year, December around about the 25th. Since December the 25th, we have had a reversal in sentiment of Ethereum versus DOT. And it's got more extreme as the gas prices have gone higher, and as Ethereum went up, it was hanging itself and handing an advantage to its rivals currently. Yes, yes, all their plans, dot 2.0, sharding, da 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 But right now the market is telling you how it feels. It wants to back other horses. Boom. And don't forget, Ethereum, market cap. Ethereum is well out on market cap compared to everyone else. 172, it's trust, it's gone through 200 uh, billion. So having um, the next three tokens all competing with it, at 40, 36, and 31. And as I say, I think Dot's going to inch up again, might get ahead of Tether um, over the next few days. We'll see. Um, knocking on the door. Between those three, they were all 10 granders, mostly. There was 30 between them. Now, you're looking at probably an average of around 35 uh, times 3. You're looking at 100 billion where before maybe they were each 10, around 10. And they were already beginning growing when they were 10. They were sub-10 at points. So that's 70 billion, 7-0, net since mid-Jan. That's been added to those that didn't go into Ethereum. So real second, third, and fourth horses that are staying on the shoulder there, 
but still a massive way off. Any one of them is miles off Ethereum, 130 billion. If you're looking at Cardano, it's still more than 130 billion behind. If it truly is seen as an alternative and it starts to scale and the fact that it started with a clean sheet and is circumventing a lot of big issues, it could quantum leap. Remember, the first isn't always the best. Alta Vista versus Google. So something to bear in mind. Something to bear in mind. Lots of potential upside. I would certainly keep those. Dot as shown. But more short time frame. Dot. It's walking up, but it is getting um, some wicks. And there's a small amount of pushback. But broadly, it's walking its way up. See those top wicks, but still pushing higher. A little bit lower there, but we'll see. We'll see what Ethereum does. So dot F has been in a turn. It could pull back a little bit. We could even get a little bit of F push back now because it's been challenged. It's the first. It's got the network effect. Da, 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 da. Could get a little bit more, but I'm wondering how much over the long haul that's going to change. So do we need to have more of these other tokens? What about Binance? Well, we'll look at Binance um, on, we did this one in detail when we showed you the setup. Let's take some of that off. It's a little bit busy. So do you uh, want Binance? Well, huge, huge move. Been around for a long time as a token. But boy, did it suddenly get running. This was the Bitcoin pause area. This was 19K Bitcoin. We call that a key inflection point for Bitcoin. Man, was that a key inflection point for Binance? Big time. This was really, really big. In fact, I'm wrong. I'm totally wrong. Apologies. I thought, uh, I think what I was referring to was over here. That's not 19K Bitcoin. That's quite recent. That's around about January of this year. So Bitcoin would have been in the 40s already. Um, this key inflection point, 38.5, 39. Next thing you know, 250. That's in log scale. So that is actually a much bigger move. In percentage terms, it's huge. We pointed out this setup when you could have got in at 140s. On smaller time frames. So that has been sudden awakening for the Binance chain. Four hours. So what about this? What about this more recently? Well, it's broken. A capping descending grind line. It was a falling wedge. It's pretty strong. It's pretty strong overall on the four hourly. Marginally low as lows. There was a low, there was a low, and there was a final low. Failure to make a new low. And out you pop. And it's up. It's up. How's it doing against F? Upside structure. Maybe we need to consider Binance again. And you may just have popped and having a small return move. Ethereum is not asserting right now. There is definitely money prepared to back the second and third places on a basis of a possible quantum leap on foundation. The narrative on gas is hurting Ethereum. I can't come away with anything but that conclusion. The narrative regarding gas prices is outsidedly supporting these other three tokens um, and giving alternative approaches a real look in. They're getting a real look in, guys. That is almost better. Uh, I should do a BNB analysis against DOT. We can do that. Um, we can divide the one by the other. That is a good upside against Ethereum. So we've got BNB in a falling wedge against the dollar with an upside break. And against Ethereum, it's got an upside structure to uh, break up. It has been bleeding up a little bit in a bloated second impulse. Slightly complex one as well, but it wasn't that different from what was over here. 
Remember when we told you about the BNB, we said it's also been in a setup against Ethereum and Bitcoin. That's why you get such a good move. There it was. Real low vol after that. Spinning top, spinning top. Boy, was that a break. What did it do in dollar terms for you? Because Ethereum is still moving. Wow. Binance. Again. Setting up. Let's have a look at it again on the dollar. It's impressing me. It's possible Ethereum might lose ground against the dollar because it's almost better set um, here. Falling wedges, it's hard to determine. How far do you go? Targets, not reliable. I don't bother. Some technical analysts will throw out targets. Very poor performance to targets. If you can't hang your hat on it, what's the point of it? You need a certain degree of confidence in it. Um, so Binance, looking great. Looking great too. So I think we need to, uh, I'll throw in Link because we had a friend who was looking at Link, asking about Link there and saying Link BTC. Links come all the way back down to funnel levels to support. This is not showing relative strength. I don't think you should be focusing on Link. If that's what it's doing against the dollar and that's the scale of the sell-off it had, why are, you, why are you talking about it? Could it recover? Yes. Wait for it to show some signs of recovery. It could also wind up and go down. There's better out there technically right now. I don't need to look at Link BTC. Um, it's not there. Hey, I'm a Monero fan, but if the chart ain't right, and it's not going to get me in there. I'm in principle, I am, but until it is showing me technical aspects that make me assess that it's going to go better, I'm not going to bother. Look at that sell off, hard sell off. It's actually a better chart than um, Link. Looks like it can bleed up a little bit, but it's not the best in the biz. So I will, I will hang ball, and that's what I suggest you do. So we've got to decide who's better. BNB dot. We know others good, but others a bit bloated right now. So should you be buying BNB or DOT? How do we decide? Well, I'll show you how you decide. You divide one by the other. And you look at what chart it gives you. So without further ado, I push that back. Divide DOT. Choose it preferably with the same exchange. That makes sense to me. How about you? That's Binance coin divided by dot. I'm afraid to say Binance coin. I don't know why I'm afraid to say. I'm a little bit pissed off that I sent... A kind of exchange, a centralized exchange is doing so damn well, but it's doing well. Um, Binance coin funds our Seifu. is control structure through and through. It's kind of like not wanting R Ripple to win. I don't think he's as bad as Ripple, but that was clearly a bull flag. And you can see what you got. That was continuation. Recently, Binance token is beating DOT. Even against DOT, that's a falling wedge. That's broken to the upside. Binance token. We can double it up the other way and have a look at it the other way. So what do we do? We say, let's have a look at DOT divided by Binance. This is called upside downing, where you ensure you don't have a bias in one particular direction. You should feel equally bearish about the inversion as you feel bullish about the other one. Ducking down, he grabs the chart. I prefer the other chart. Head and shoulders -y type look to this. Monarch head and shoulders. A little bit of a return move, but it didn't invalidate the right shoulder. And down, 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 down she went. Nasty cells, broadening structure, rising wedge, sell off. And now you've got this. I'm not going to feel bullish uh, for that. I'm not going to call bo bottoms on that after that head and shoulder. So I'm slightly biased to Binance token. Yeah, didn't want to say that, but I said it. Because that's what the chart says. 
Okay, EOS. I did some research from past news that BTC will be running on EOS and ETH with others. But first, BTC and ETH. There are some strong connections tying this. Um, we'd need to see some degree of strength out of EOS. I'm not even considering it. We've also got Lumen and other things that could be considered in this space. But we need to see them getting at least into the top 10. Stellar's at 10. EOS is down at 22. It's just not showing to be backed by money. If it wants to, be, if it wants to throw its hat into that ring, it needs to show us the money. Show me the money, Jerry. Show me the money. It's not showing me the money. Give Charlie Lee some love. Is he even uh, working on his token? I don't think he is. Litecoin. Litecoin manages to stay in on kind of not much of anything really in terms of a development sense. Lumen, no real cause or interest. It could fall out of the top 10. Where's Litecoin? I will do a Litecoin for your Charlie Lee man love. I'm a bigger fan of Bruce Lee personally. But there you go. We can all have a Lee. Take the knee, have a Lee. Mine's Bruce. Uh, no, I'm not impressed with Litecoin. Not impressed with Litecoin. It's going to mimic Bitcoin -y in a kind of half assed way, maybe. Uh, it's got some degree of recovery going on there. But it made marginally lower low. It's having a rally. It's, 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 not, it's not of interest. It really isn't. But it'll probably fart ass around in the top 10, top 15 for a while. But it could drift. Uh, Nathan says, thanks, bro. Man lovely. That's it. Man lovely. You mean Charlie Ree, <laughs> says Phil Kogan. That's a bit naughty. Uh, some leeway. Exactly. Soul. LTC is adding privacy. Well, that would be nice. Uh, but are they going to do it seriously? Aren't they a bit Bitcoin pro pro banker? It's a little bit too friendly. I want to I want to I want a coin that's hated by the control structure like Monero. It's all too high already. People going to get wrecked. Don't sleep on LTC. So it does, it does have that. Privacy buy and news event on March. Yep, thank you. That's interesting to know. Thanks for the updates. Binance makes more profit than Tesla, and that's no joke. Um, you mean some really, says someone. XRP BTC and Tron BTC analysis. Big descending triangles. XRP and Tron, well, if we're shorting um, and you want to have a look at it from that point of view, I might be open to that. XRP, BTC. Yeah, I mean, that's hideous. This is, this is Ripple. That said, it could all easily just do one of those spurious sudden law case spikes and then fizzle again. So this is kind of a token to, to sell on spikes. Um... And if you wanted to buy on dips, you'd have to be very, very careful. You don't want to be bag holder. Low vol, bleed out. Look at this. I mean, two hourly. Horrible chart. I would be more inclined to think of it in terms of what round numbers was it trying to hold. It was trying to hold a thousand. I'll put that on. Um, It's never shown itself to be trustworthy and it never shows itself to appreciate. This has been a perpetual decay token in an environment where many others are doing a lot. Why would you want to take all the risk of being in crypto and the volatility and then be in a token that doesn't move? Um, XRP is at 44 cents. You know how many times and for how long it's been at 44 cents? When was the first time it touched 44 cents? Well, obviously in the bull market, I suppose. But look at how it's performed. Let's just put that in a two-day chart and show you how it's performed. That's how it is. That's your bull market so far. You're absolute low and you are here now. 
Could it have another spike? Will it play some catch up? I'm pretty sure it's going to go up. I just think it's going to underperform many other things that are going up a lot faster. And you want to sit in going sideways and down in an environment where, where quite a few things have been going up. No, um, their model doesn't work for me. So, yeah, careful, the XRP army will come for me. Yep, he's probably right. Uh, I don't think they have me as a fan long term, um, generally, just because there's nothing there. Uh, Tron, also, liquidity, If even if you're shorting, be careful. But I, it wouldn't surprise me if it's bleeding out. So the, the, the tokens that are getting money backing them on the platform space, because Tron was also supposed to be eating Ethereum, is Ethereum and the three hot dogs, Binance Coin, Dot, and Ada. Ada's run looking a little tired. Binance Coin looks the freshest of the three. Dot doesn't look bad. That's where we're at, guys. That's your crypto. Bitcoin to recover. But watch that dollar index. Strong dollar, bad for crypto, generally bad for Bitcoin. Bad for all, obviously, the dollar pairs as well. Bad for gold. Um, as well, bad for silver. That's part of it. So watch that now. It isn't all going to be tailwind now. That's why it was an initial break. Platform tokens, Binance currently looking really strong um, for a move. Ethereum looking largely weak against DOT um, and against uh, Binance. And also, Ada has clearly broken out of a long-standing range, although it's hyper-extended. So Ada could come down, but it's clearly setting new territory now. That is the key conclusions of the technical study we have done for you today. We have 708 of you watching and almost 50% of you have given us a like. So we appreciate that. That's awesome. We are also, remember, book a call for a link below to come part of our community. You can catch the trades. You could have been earlier in Binance. You could have been uh, earlier in DOT. You could have been earlier in other. Um, you could also... You could also also catch the tra traditional markets. You can come and join us on the non-farm payroll. At the end, there's a free mini-series if you have no money. We want to help you. We want to help you grow. Grab it. There is no list or anything to do that involves anyone else. Uh, you will only get a mail from us. Um, we respect your privacy. Uh, thank you very much for coming on. Um, and I will let you all go. Enjoy yourselves. Enjoy yourselves. Have a great time. See you next time. Bye for now.